Good morning. So I'm happy to start the first lecture of the day. For the next 25 minutes, I will be speaking on glucose measurement and clinical utility. Glucose is a major energy substrate in our body. Our body gets glucose from the dietary carbohydrate as well as produced from glycogen, lactate, glycerol and amino acids endogenously. In a healthy subject, blood glucose concentration is maintained between 2.5 to 8 millimoles per liter. Glucose can be measured in whole blood, plasma, CSF, urine and other body fluids include aqueous humor and joint fluid. There are various methods of measuring glucose in the body fluids. Among them, enzymatic method such as hexokinase and glucose oxidase methods are widely used. When we look at the hexokinase method, glucose in the is phosphorylated by ATP in the presence of hexokinase. The glucose 6-phosphate is converted to 6-phosphogluconate in the presence of NADP. The NADPH formed is proportional to the amount of glucose in the sample and its absorbance is measured at 340 nanometer. Hexokinase method is highly accurate and precise. When we look at the disadvantages, it can be interfered by many substances. The hemolytic sample is unacceptable because the phosphate esters and enzymes released from the red cell will affect the, interfere the assay. Other sources of interference are drugs, bilirubin, lipemia, and fructose. In a fasting sample, fructose concentration is minimal. Therefore, uh, in a fasting sample, fructose interference is not a problem. Now we move to glucose oxidase method. Glucose oxidase catalyzes the, the glucose to glucuronic acid and hydrogen peroxide. Addition of chromogenic oxygen acceptor and peroxidase forming a compound, a color, colored compound, and the color intensity is measured at 540 nanometer. Glucose oxidase is highly specific for beta D glucose and the second step, the step that involving the peroxidase enzyme is less specific. So this, it can be interfered by many substances such as uric acid, ascorbic acid, bilirubin, hemoglobin, tetracycline and glutathione. These substances compete for chromogen, for hydrogen peroxide and causes low results. So nowadays, many automated methods, the manufacturers have taken various steps to eliminate all these interference. The glucose dehydrogen method, here also glucose is converted to gluconolactone by glucose dehydrogenase and the NADH generated is proportional to the glucose concentration in the sample. So this reaction is highly specific for glucose and there are no interference from substance normally found in the blood. And the results are also close agreement with hexokinase method. Now the glucose measurement in the urine. So when we take the qualitative method that is Benedict test. So Benedict solution contain cupric ions in the alkaline medium. So these cupric ions are converted to cuprous ions by reducing substance. So once the test has done, if there is no color change, that is the solution remain blue, it indicates there are no reducing substance in the sample. The green color indicates trace amount of reducing substance, orange and brick red indicates moderate and large amount of reducing substance respectively. Clinic test is a copper reduction test. So it is a reagent tablet test based on the classic Benedict reaction. It is used to determine the amount of reducing substance in the urine and stools. So after the test, the test color 
is uh, is look after with the standard color chart and the results is interpreted. Clinistics test. So here is the glucose oxidase method. So it is used widely used in all urine strips. So here also the uh, the color change the, the in the in the urine strip the the end is impregnated with glucose. The strip contain glucose oxidase and peroxidase and the dye. And in the test end, the, when the freshly void urine is uh, deposited and it is looked after a certain period, usually after 10 seconds, and the color appear is we have to compare the color with the standard color chart and the results is interpreted. So when we compare the clinic test and the clinistics test, Clinic test is for reducing substance. So glucose, galactose, lactose, fructose, maltose, all will give the positive results. Clinistics test is specific for glucose and it is more sensitive. And the, in the urine sample, the creatinine and uric acid also can give positive for clinic test. But in the sensitivity has been adjusted not to detect the normal concentration of creatinine and uric acid in the urine. The clinic test false positive can be caused by various drugs, salicylate, penicillin, streptomycin, etc. In clinic test, the false positive can be caused by strong oxidizing agents and exposure the strip for a long period to the air. The false negative can be caused by reducing substances such as ketones, ascorbic acid, salicylate, homogenetic acid. Now we'll move up to glucometer. The glucometers use reflectance photometry or electrochemistry to measure the rate of the reaction or the final concentration of the product. The testing time and the range, reading range vary between the glucometers. So they are usually the manufacturer will provide the control solution and the calibration is automatic or use lot specific cord chips or strips. So always you have to remember the whole blood glucose concentration are 10 to 15 percentage lower than the plasma glucose. So this is due to the water, water content in the plasma is approximately 11 percent higher than that of the whole blood. So the glucometers can be calibrated to report plasma glucose value even the sample is the whole blood. There are various factors affecting the capillary blood sugar measurement. One is the user variability can cause different results. Then the anemia falsely increase and polycythemia falsely decrease the glucose measurement. The other, other factors are defective reagent strips, instrument malfunction, changes in the attitude, temperature and humidity, hypotension and high triglyceride concentration in the sample. The dehydration greatly increase the blood viscosity and lower the blood glucose measurement. So few things about the sample collection for glucose. For the plasma glucose, blood should be collected in a sugar tube containing sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate. Sodium fluoride inhibit glycolysis and potassium oxalate act as an anticoagulant and plasma should be separated from cells within 60 minutes of collection. For the CSF glucose, CSF should be collected in a plain tube. So the random plasma glucose, to check the random plasma glucose, blood is collected from a non-fasting individuals. So here I have put all the cutoff values according to American Diabetic Association guidelines. So as you all know, if the patient is with hyperglycemic symptoms and the fast, uh, random plasma glucose more than 200 indicates diabetes. For the fasting plasma glucose, 8 to 10 hours fasting is needed. So during this fasting period, no food or drink is permitted, but can drink water. And the morning dose of insulin and the diabetic medicine should be taken after the blood collection. So as I assume you all know these cutoff values. The postprandial plasma glucose is blood collected after exactly two hours after eating the meal.
So time should be collected from the uh, onset of the starting time of the meal, not the finishing time. And meal should be completed within 15 minutes, can take the usual medicine after the lunch, and the normal postprandial plasma glucose is less than 140. Then oral glucose tolerance test. So OGTT is used to assess the postprandial glucose metabolism of the person. So the person should, the patient should allow to take normal diet for at least three days. And the test should be performed in the morning. Eight to ten hours fasting is needed. So during this period can drink water. Then, then the fasting sample is collected. And the glucose solution, that is the 75 gram anhydrous glucose or 82.5 gram monohydrous glucose dissolved in 300 ml water. And this solution uh, should be drink within 10 minutes and you have to note the time. Then the patient should sit and wait during the whole procedure. Patient should not eat or drink during the procedure. Then the first, first hour sample and the second hour samples are collected. If the patient has nausea or vomiting, test should be discontinued. And sample should be analyzed as soon as possible. So if not, plasma should be separated. So OGTT should not be performed on hospitalized, febrile, acutely ill and inactive patients and patients who are suffering from intercurrent infection and within six weeks of severe metabolic stress, example myocardial infarction, recovering from a severe illness. Drugs such as corticosteroids, OCP, oral contraceptive pills and diuretics may impair the glucose intolerance. Therefore, these drugs should be stopped before the test. So the interpretation of OGTT, so OGTT interpret results are depend on the age of the patient, body weight, then physical activity and certain drugs also affected. So when we consider the non-pregnant uh, non uh, non-pregnant patient for the screening of type 2 diabetes, so usually the 2 hours plasma glucose value more than 200 indicate diabetes. So this is the criteria for the gestational diabetes mellitus. So here the cutoff values are different. So the fasting is 92, 1 hour 180, and 2 hours 153. So to diagnose gestational diabetes, one or more positive values, one or more values should be above the cutoff. So this is the glucose tolerance test of a diabetic patient. So you can see all three values are above the cutoff. This is a flat glucose tolerance test. So you can see the all three values are very close. close. So it, it can occur in a healthy young adult due to effective absorption and rapid clearance. And it also seen in malabsorption and slow gastric emptying. This is a lack storage response test. So here <coughs> the glucose absorption is rapid and you can get moderate, uh, mild to moderate hypoglycemia in the second hour sample. So it could be due to reactive hypoglycemia after gastrectomy or severe liver disease and in the early diabetes. Few things about the glucose challenge test. So here no fasting is needed. Patient has to drink 50 gram anhydrous glucose dissolved in 30 ml water and glucose should be drink in 30, 3 to 5 minutes and then the first hour plasma glucose value is checked. The first hour value less than 130 is considered as normal. The glycolytic hemoglobin or HbA1c. HbA1c is a marker of the glycemic status over a longer lifespan. So it provides average blood glucose, glucose concentration over the previous three months, but 50% of the HbA1c concentration indicate the average blood glucose concentration over the last 30 days. And these assays should be certified by the National Glycoglobin, Glycohemoglobin Standardization Program as traceable to DCCT reference. 
so i am sure you all know these cutoff values so it can the hpmlc can be reported in percentage and as well as in the millimol per mole so if the five less than 5.7 percentage or less than 42 millimol per mole indicate normal and more than 6.5 percentage or 48 millimol per mole indicate diabetes and in a target HbA1c level for a diabetic patient is less than 7 percentage. So there are various factors affecting the HbA1c results because the HbA1c test depend on the red cell normal lifespan of the red cells. So in dye and deficiency the values are uh, results are high because there is large proportion of the old red, red cells. So in hemolytic anemia, due to hemolysis, the red cell lifespan is reduced. So therefore, the results are low because there are a lo lot of new red cells. And in acute blood, blood loss also, the values are low be because of the uh, high proportion of, uh, proportion of the new red cells. Then the glycosuria. What is glycosuria? Appearance of glucose in the urine following cessation of tubular absorption. So what is renal threshold for glucose? The renal threshold means the plasma glucose concentration at which glucose begins to appear in the urine. So in normally the renal threshold for glucose is 180 milligram per deciliter or 10 millimol per liter. The pregnancy is associated with reduced renal threshold for glucose. So when you look at this figure, it indicates the renal tubule. So you, in, in a normal circumstance, almost all filtered glucose through the glomerulus is reabsorbed by, at proximal tubule by sodium dependent glucose co-transporter proteins. So when we consider the causes of glycosuria, glycosuria can occur with gly hyperglycemia or without hyperglycemia. So glycosuria with hyperglycemia, in this situation, the renal threshold plasma glucose concentration exceeds the renal threshold and the glucose appear in the urine. So example in diabetes, Cushing syndromes and steroid therapy. So in glycosuria without hyperglycemia, it is due to renal tubular dysfunction, either due to defect in glucose co-transporter or Fanconi syndrome. So what is Fanconi syndrome? Fanconi syndrome is a proximal uh, tubular defect. It causes malabsorption of the substance, which are usually absorbed by the proximal tubule. So in Fanconi syndrome, the patient will excrete large amount of glucose, amino acids, uh, bicarbonate, and phosphate in the urine and certain drugs, example SGLT2 inhibitors that inhibit the absorption, uh, absorption of the glucose in the proximal tubule. So emphaglyflozin is a, one of the popular anti-diabetic drug which is widely used these days. So it inhibits the absorption of glucose at the proximal tubule. So in a patient who is on this, a diabetic patient who is on this drug will develop glycosuria in the presence of normal plasma glucose. Finally, few things about the CSF glucose. CSF glucose is measured in patients with suspected central nervous system infection. CSF glucose is normally 65 percentage of the plasma glucose concentration. CSF glucose should always be interpreted in light with the plasma glucose concentration in a blood sample obtained at the same time. Central nervous system infection can cause low CSF glucose but normal CSF glucose does not rule out the infection. Elevated, elevated CSF glucose is, is caused by only the reason for the elevated CSF glucose is elevated plasma blood glucose. So in summary, plasma glucose can be measured with high precision and accuracy using enzymatic methods. Hexokinase method is considered most accurate and is commonly used on automated system. Fasting plasma glucose, 2 hours post glucose during 75 gram OGTT and HbA1c are equally appropriate for the diagnosis of diabetes. Plasma glucose concentration is 10 to 15 times higher than that of the whole blood. 
capillary blood glucose should not be used for the diagnosis of diabetes. CSF glucose should always be interpreted in light of the plasma glucose concentration. Thank you.